If you want a 3D printer to print with engineering filaments, you've probably found that there aren't many budget options. Could the Chidi X Plus 3 do all you want for a more budget friendly price tag? In this video, we're going to find out. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. What you won't get here is a first impressions video or a quick couple of prints before I give you my opinion. I've been using this machine for over six months now and it's pretty much become my go-to machine over that time. Chidi sent me this 3D printer to test, but unlike some other manufacturers, they've never pressured me into making a video. Now I never actually intended to take this long to make a video, but what it has done is given me a great idea of what long-term ownership is like. If you decide after watching this video that you'd like to buy a Chidi X Plus 3 for yourself, then check out the links in the description where you'll find the best price I can get for you. So the first thing you need to know is that the X Plus 3 is big. Actually, it's not just big, it's huge. The reason that it's so big is that Chidi have tried to give you everything you'll need from a 3D printer in one package, so that if you buy it, you shouldn't need anything else. And on the whole, it's not that far off in that regard. It does have a few quirks, but we'll get to those shortly. The X Plus 3 is actually so big and heavy that I needed help lifting the box into my workshop. Chidi lists the weight as 25 kilograms, but it's more the size that makes it a two person lift. The reason for all this weight is that under the household appliance looking plastic outer shell is a very solid metal frame. Now you may have seen some negative stuff about the Chidi machines and there were some issues with the early X Plus 3s. Chidi actually pulled the early units from sale to avoid customers being unhappy so that they could fix the issues. During my time of owning this unit, Chidi have upgraded the firmware to tidy up a few things and they've also sent out some other mods which I've seen them do with other customers at no charge. Certainly any X Plus 3 that you were to buy now would be a long way from those early units and it shows that Chidi are much more interested in happy customers than they are their own bottom line. So once you get it out of the box, what do you need to do to get it going? Well, not very much actually. As with many 3D printers that you buy now, you're guided through the whole setup process through the 3D printer's display. You're shown how to move all the packing materials and the cable ties and fixings that stop things getting damaged during shipping. Once you confirm this has been done, the printer launches straight into its setup process by heating the bed. When it's up to temperature, it asks you to use the included plastic sheet to set a Z offset. This is just simply a case of pressing some buttons until the sheet is gripped between the bed and the nozzle. If you've watched any of my bed leveling or Z offset videos, then you'll know that I'm not really a big fan of the way manufacturers tell you to set a Z offset. However, I did follow the instructions to the letter and the first print did complete fine. However, we're jumping ahead. Once you've done your bit with the Z offset, then the rest of the setup and calibration process is done with very little interaction. The printer takes a bed mesh and then runs through a process called vibration compensation, which is supposed to remove effects from the surface of prints like ghosting. It does this by kind of wiggling parts and then using sensors, checks how much stuff wiggled and then compensates. Unfortunately, I wasn't 100% happy with what it did here. And when it came to getting the best possible print results on a project later on, I had to do a little bit of work, but I'll show you that when I get to it. Anyway, once it's finished with all its wiggling, it's time to load filament. With these Corex Y machines, there's always a little bit of a challenge as to where to mount any filament holders. And I actually quite like what Chidi have done. With the X Plus 3, there's a removable spool holder on the back where you can just place a filament ring. However, many of the engineering filaments that you'll likely want to print with if you're buying an X Plus 3 are hygroscopic. This means that they absorb water from the atmosphere. To avoid this happening while you're printing, you often need to buy some sort of separate filament dryer or dry box to isolate your filament from the surrounding air. What Chidi have done is designed their own filament dry box, which attaches to the spool holder. Or it will actually sit on a flat surface next to the machine if you find reaching around the back to change filament tricky. I have this problem. I've had the X Plus 3 sitting on a bench and I'd have to spin it round every time I want to change filament. What I do instead is sit the dry box next to the printer, which makes filament changes a breeze. There's also room for desiccant inside the dry box to maintain a nice dry environment for your filament. The filament does still have to be fed into the back of the machine, but I found that with a little bit of practice, I can do this by feel without having to turn the machine. With filament loaded, you're off and running. If you're watching this video because you have a project you want to get going on and you need something 3D printing, why not check out PCBWay? PCBWay are well known for their PCB prototype and manufacture, but did you know that's not all they do? PCBWay now have extensive 3D printing, CNC machining, plus many other manufacturing options to help you get started on that project without having to learn how to use a new machine. 
Check out the links in the description to see their full capabilities. Now back to the X Plus 3. The Chidi X Plus 3 uses Clipper firmware with its own custom UI over the top, which will either simplify things if you're new to 3D printing, or it could annoy you if you're very familiar with Clipper. You don't really get much extra with the Chidi UI, just a simpler interface that gives you all you need while standing at your machine. When it comes to remote access, there appear to be no restrictions on what you can do, and connecting to the X Plus 3 using a PC, phone or tablet on the same network was a breeze. If you're new to Clipper, one of its big advantages, if you're that way inclined, is that you can mess with stuff. Want to add a camera? No problem. Want to change the way certain processes run? No problem. The only problem with all this access is that you can cause yourself some problems if you're not careful. If you start digging into setup files and changing things without really knowing what you're doing, then it's likely that you'll mess some things up. However, as Clipper is becoming more popular now, there is a growing resource base where you can usually find how to put right anything that has gone wrong. If you don't know what you're doing, then just stay out of the setup files and you'll be fine. So as with most 3D printers, there are a number of pre-configured setup files supplied on the USB stick, and I'd always recommend printing one of these first. My X Plus 3 came with a 500 gram reel of PLA, which is a lot more than you usually get. However, there are a lot of 3D printers that can print pretty PLA parts. If the X Plus 3 was going to impress me, then it would have to do more. Although parts printed from ASA or ABS can be a lot more durable, one big problem that they have is that they like to warp. If you want to stop prints warping, then you need to avoid any drafts and keep the air around your print warm. This is why the X Plus 3 looks like a big plastic oven. That is kind of what it is. There's a PTC heater with a fan inside the enclosure, and you can set and maintain the temperature all the way up to 65 degrees. I decided to test this straight away with some ASA, which I have to say printed much better than any other printer I've got without a heated enclosure. I have the X Plus 3's younger brother, the X Smart 3, and whilst I've always liked the way it works, it doesn't have the heated enclosure. The only real way to heat its enclosure is to preheat the bed for quite a long time before you start a print. This does work to a degree, but the dedicated enclosure heater on the X Plus 3 works way better. With a bit more testing, I found that parts that have taken a few attempts to get right on other machines printed first time on the X Plus 3 with the right settings. Getting the right settings is all pretty easy by just using the included Chidi slicer that's supplied on the USB stick. I thought it was interesting that in between receiving my X Smart 3 and my X Plus 3, Chidi changed the slicer that they recommend using. The slicer is the software that you use to prepare any model for printing on your specific machine. Originally, Chidi's slicer called Chidi Print was based on another slicer called Cura, which is one of the more popular ones over the last few years. Chidi Slicer is based on the open source Slick3R software, which is the same as that used by some of the others like Bamboo Lab, Prusa, and my new favourite, Orca Slicer. I think that this transition is definitely a change for the better, and print quality has improved as a result. As I've already said, connecting to your 3D printer from another computer on the same network is one of the great features of Clipper firmware. All you need to do to set this up on the X Plus 3 is to enter your Wi-Fi details. You can then take note of the IP address that's shown and then enter this into any browser on another machine. With Chidi Slicer, there's much better support for this Clipper connectivity, and there's even a dedicated tab within the slicing software where you can connect directly to your machine. This means that you can send your slice files directly to your 3D printer, start them going, and then monitor their progress all within the same piece of software. However, what makes this process so much better is if you use a camera. With a camera, you can obviously see if the print has started okay and monitor its progress and stop it if something goes wrong. Unfortunately, Chidi don't supply a camera with the X Plus 3 as standard. I just used a standard USB webcam and then after turning it on in the settings, everything worked. The only problem is that it can be difficult to get a webcam with a wide enough field of view for it to go inside the printer and still see the whole bed and then anything else needs to sit outside, which can be really clunky. I did have a go at fitting a camera inside, but it's not great. Chidi have now released a camera designed to fit inside the X Plus 3, but they didn't send me one, and it is an additional purchase if you want one. Unless you actually have your 3D printer sitting next to you while you're printing, then to me a camera is pretty necessary nowadays, and it's a shame that they didn't include one, as they do with the bigger brother, the X Max 3. Apart from the camera, the whole slicer and printer integration is really slick now and a big improvement over what we had before. Another reason why the X Plus 3 might be the machine that you choose 
for engineering printing is the ability to heat the nozzle up to 350 degrees and the bed up to 120 degrees. This means that you can print with many of the higher temperature filaments like nylon and polycarbonate. It does fall short of being able to print with the really high temperature stuff like PEEK, PEI or PPSU though. So unfortunately it is still a high grade hobby machine or a lower grade industrial machine. You can print with abrasive filaments like those infused with carbon fiber and similar, but you do need to change the hot end to do this. The X plus three does come with a spare hot end, which has more durable components and a hardened steel nozzle for if you do want to use these filaments though. The X plus three can also handle filament flow of up to 35 millimeters per second cubed and accelerations of up to 20,000 millimeters per second squared. It can also technically reach speeds of up to 600 millimeters per second. All of this is on par and actually slightly better than a lot of the other leading Core XY machines that we've seen recently, including Bamboo Labs X1. The X plus three doesn't have all of the bells and whistles of the Bamboo Lab flagship machines though. You don't get things like a LiDAR sensor checking your first layers or the ability to print with multiple materials in one print without stopping to change material yet. You do get an exhaust for any fumes, which has room for a carbon filter bag. There's no easy way to add a duct to this vent though, so you need to be happy that whatever's coming out is okay to breathe or add some kind of DIY duct yourself. So it prints fast with more filament options and has some clever ideas to look after your delicate filaments. What's not to love? Well, it hasn't all been plain sailing. After a couple of months, my original hot end assembly died. Chidi did send me a replacement straight out, but I'm not sure if this is because I had a review unit or whether all customers get treated the same way. Changing the hot end is a bit long winded too, especially when you compare it to something like the Bamboo Lab A1 or the Flash Forge Adventura 5M Pro. There are a few screws to undo so you can reach all of the wiring, but the thing I found most difficult was being able to reach everything. I have my benches a little bit higher than normal to look after my back and being able to reach around the back of the hot end would need a step ladder. What I found easier was lifting the printer down onto a lower surface so I could get in the top. However, at 25 kilograms, this wasn't that easy and it's something worth bearing in mind if you plan on doing regular nozzle changes. Most of my other complaints are all pretty minor. I don't love that looking at your print while it's running means trying to look through a molded plastic section of the door, which makes your eyes go funny after a little while. It also makes it difficult to place that external camera that I've been using to get a clear view. It's also not that easy to clean out and there are lots of little pockets in the base for filament to get stuck in. Ideally, you need a hoover to clean it out, but it doesn't really affect the function of the machine at all. Also, I can't help but think that a lot of the enclosure heating is wasted as there are lots of little holes and panel gaps which let any hot air out. This would obviously also affect how well the X plus three can contain any undesirable VOCs in the air. The Flash Forge 5M Pro does a much better job in both these regards, but doesn't have a chamber heater. Also, as I was saying earlier, I had to do a bit more work than the standard configuration to get the print results that I wanted. The X plus three can print really well, but no matter how many times I ran the automatic vibration compensation process, I just still couldn't match the results I got from doing the process manually. For best results, as with any clipper control 3D printer, you're best running through all of the different calibration procedures to make sure that everything is tuned just right. This is now all pretty easy with slicers that are based on the Slick3R software, but I found Orca Slicer a bit easier than Chidi Slicer. In fact, I've generally migrated all of my slicing over to Orca Slicer now, and you can too if you have the X plus three. There are profiles for all the Chidi machines, and it's very similar to Chidi Slicer, but with some more features. There are a couple of other details that are worth noting too. I haven't mentioned the print volume, which is 280 by 280 by 270. Obviously it depends what you compare it to, but for a Core XY printer, that's pretty big. It's bigger than the Bamboo Lab machines and it's bigger than Creality's K1 and K1C, and it's only slightly smaller than their K1 Max. I'm also pleased to see hardened steel linear rails on the X Plus 3 rather than the carbon ones on the X Smart 3. These should last pretty indefinitely if looked after. I'd like to show you all of the parts that I printed with the X Plus 3, but I actually can't. Most of the parts that I've been printing with this Chidi machine are actually for customers and are either so top secret I'm not allowed to show you or are just sold and I don't have them here to film. I am however currently working on a really fun project which will have most of the parts printed on the X plus three and should really show off what it can do. Hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that one.
So the X plus three is Chidi's best effort at a large Core XY 3D printer with fast speeds, a heated chamber and full clipper control. To do all of this perfectly would cost a lot more. So it all comes down to where the money has been saved. I think that with everything the X plus three can do, Chidi have saved the money in mostly the right places. As I say, I think not including a camera is a mistake, but generally owning and using the X plus three is a very pleasurable experience. If you don't want to do any of those clipper calibrations, then you're looking at a more expensive machine, or you're gonna lose another feature like the heated chamber if you go for the Flashforge machines, for instance. One major reason why I've really enjoyed using the X Plus 3 is my particular situation. My 3D printers are in my workshop, which when I'm not in it is unheated and it's winter. If I want to print something, I can remotely turn the 3D printer on using something like a smart plug, set the chamber heater, slice a model, start the model printing, and then watch it complete all while sitting in my pants if I want. Obviously, I can only do all of this after adding a camera. And that's not a camera to see me sitting in my pants. I'm sure you know what I mean. I really don't have another 3D printer that can do all of those things in a cold workshop. If you have a similar setup, then this will be a great 3D printer for you. However, if your printer is somewhere heated or it's very close to you while it's running, then you might not get all of the benefits from every feature. I can see this being a great 3D printer for anybody looking to print prototypes or things like enclosures because of its ability to print with some of the stronger higher temperature filaments. And of course, its build volume. Remember to check out the links in the description if you do decide to buy a Chidi X Plus 3. If you just want to print with PLA, have limited space, or only want pretty multicolored prints, then you're probably best looking elsewhere. However, if you're looking for something a bit more industrial, then the X Plus 3 could be just right. Click over here for a couple of other options if the X Plus 3 doesn't seem just right for you, and hit subscribe to see what's coming next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.